Come on then, own up. Who else wears a bum bag? Or is it a fanny pack? I guess it depends where you're from. You would think that English would be just one language, wouldn't you? It's not just camping stuff though, there's quite a few different words that we use. So here in the UK, we're in autumn now. In the USA and Canada and stuff, they call it the fall. I'm guessing that's because the leaves fall down. Anyway, welcome back everybody. It's a beautiful autumn afternoon. So we're camping again in this lovely little spot. Looks like somebody's using a petrol stove over there. They're a bit lively then, but we'll talk about that later. Starting to drop cold a little bit. It was six degrees this morning. And less than two weeks ago, we had 25 degrees. Crazy. So I really needed to get out camping. A bit of mother nature's medicine. I've got a few little health issues going on and I needed something easy, but still wanted to get out. I'm feeling the chill a little bit, so time to dig out some of the cold weather gear. So I did promise to show you the new Terra Nova Southern Cross one. So that's the shelter we're going with today. It is a four season solo tent, so it should be really cozy tonight. It's a little bit on the windy side today. We're expecting winds between 30 and 40 mile an hour this evening. Over the next couple of days, we're expecting Storm Babette, I think it's called. I've had quite a lot of use out of the previous Southern Cross one. It's definitely up to strong winds. Hopefully this is a bit of a flatter spot this time. It's quite straightforward to set this up. Just clip these in at the ends. Everything's colour coordinated. And the blue pole just goes through the sleeve. Pretty standard eyelets on the end. You raise me up. Finish off with a few clips. I even managed to do this with some gloves on. So before guy everything out. I'm just going to have a lie down in it today just to make sure I've got a nice flat lay. It's a freestanding tent so I can move it around really easily if I want to. You can roll and tie the door up but you just want to quickly get in and out. There's little clips on it as well. Let's have a look inside shall we? Corner is tightening up a little bit. Really easy to do. It's better. It's all right, huh? Let's get things tightened up a little bit. lightweight guy lines as well. Here we go, all pitched up, looking very sturdy. As you can see, we're not facing the city today. The wind is coming towards me, but fingers crossed, other than a bit of wind, we should get a sunset and a sunrise in the morning. Let's get out that wind for a little bit, shall we? All set up. Nice and cosy in here. Can we get a kettle on? Have a bit of a natter. So I've gone for the alcohol stove again today. Um, it is the most reliable for me. It works every time without fail in all conditions. Also really peaceful. So I'm going to be using the I'm going to use the cone today, 
Just use the X-Boil, I think. If I can get it out. There we go. Doesn't get much simpler. The little tin. These three little arms just fit on the pan support, which also doubles up as a which also doubles up as a windshield. Easy for me to say, isn't it? Bob a little bit of bioethanol in there. There we go. So I like this as well because it's spill proof. So then that's I can just turn that over now. Look, and there's no alcohol going to come out. So if you accidentally knock it over, the whole tent area is not going to get filled up with alcohol. Set your tent on fire. So today's brew is not the norm for me. I'm normally a cappuccino man. I've got tea and it's decaf tea. <laughs> I'll explain why in a second when I get the stove lit. This light is really good by the way. Soto extendable torch. I don't know what it's called. I'll put a link in the description. Let's get that on the go. Yeah, so I'm on decaffeinated stuff at the minute. Apparently all that caffeine isn't good for my blood pressure. So I mentioned in my last video that I had to go for my health checkup. I went Thursday, I think it was, last week, and got a bit of a nasty shock, to be honest with you. I know that I don't live the healthiest of lifestyles, but um, I got a little bit of a wake-up call, shall we say. So first of all, I'll tell you a little bit about my relationship with doctors. So I'm not a huge fan when it comes to visiting the doctor. In fact, I'm still registered at my old doctors and I've lived in Sheffield for four years now, something like that. And <laughs> so it tells you how often I go. But they kept sending me text messages to say I was due a health check. Me being me, I just ignored them and just thought, I'm all right, I can still climb up Helvellyn. I can still walk the Cumbria way. I know I'm carrying a little bit of timber, all they're going to tell me is that I need to lose some weight and maybe change my lifestyle a little bit. But, you know, things were okay for me, so, so I didn't think I needed to bother. But a few weeks ago, I kept smelling this stuff when I was nowhere near it. Um, some sort of alcohol, acetone or nail polish remover. So obviously, I googled it. Google's your best friend if you want to find out who won the FA Cup in 1973. But when it comes to medical conditions, it always gives you worst case scenario and you end up dying. So the Google search said to me that if you could smell those kind of things, then it was a serious case of diabetes. Um, your blood sugar levels um, are not good at all. You need to seek immediate um, medical assistance. So rather than rushing off to A&E, I booked myself in for one of the medical checks. Um, I was a bit surprised because I thought if I've got diabetes, because I've been less than 12 months before for an eye test and I paid for that retina scan thing, which they can tell you from that whether you've got diabetes as well. And they said I was, I was fine, my blood sugar levels were okay. But obviously the best thing to do was get it checked out. Nice cup of tea. Obviously sweetener as well. Can't be putting that nasty sugar inside me, can I? <laughs> Bit of powdered milk. This is that um, Nido stuff. Although it smells off. Not sure if it is. Does it go off? It's been in this pot for a bloody long time. I'm going to stick a bit in anyway. It's the worst that can happen. It smells like grated cheese. <laughs> yeah, so I went to the doctors. 
I was mainly worried about a little prostate check, but that didn't happen. Um, all they did was they weighed me, they took my measurement of my waist, took some blood, and right at the end she says, oh, I need to check your blood pressure. So she bobs the thing on my arm, pumps it up a little bit, and she says, your blood pressure is a little bit high. So we're going to need you to monitor it over the next seven days. Gave me a form to fill in and I ordered a blood pressure monitor from Amazon. And they said that within two weeks, I get like a text message through, which gave me a score. So I need to be under 10% or something. Now I've got to make some serious changes to my lifestyle. The doctor says, try not to worry about it. She says, you're one of the few blokes that actually comes for the checkup. And which... She's a little bit scary, really, considering that she said that high blood pressure is the silent killer. You know, it's the, the cause of heart attacks, heart disease, cardiovascular disease. And you don't even know you've got it unless you test yourself for it. So I went home, obviously a bit concerned. I had to wait for the blood pressure monitor to come and a few days for the, the blood test to get back. They were for cholesterol and blood sugar levels for diabetes, things like that. So I was expecting a couple of sleepless nights anyway. Right, we're going to nip out and catch this sunset. I'll tell you in a bit about me. Blood pressure nightmare and my blood results. So while that sun's setting, just want to quickly give a shout out to Squarespace, who's kindly sponsored the video today. So if you don't already know, Squarespace is the number one place to go if you want to have a go at building a website all by yourself. It's really easy to do. You don't need any experience in web design or coding. So for our Messner website, all we did was choose one of their ready-made templates. We uploaded our own photos, added some text, and within a couple of hours, we were up and running. We've used our website for selling merchandise, our online prize competitions, and of course, the YouTube channel. The platform's got loads of features. You can use the analytics to check where all your traffic's coming from. You can send out newsletters or set up an e-commerce shop. The possibilities are endless. We live in an age now where pretty much everyone's got an online presence through social media. But if you want to go to the next level and build a website of your own, then click the link in the description below or head over to squarespace.com forward slash Paul Messner. You'll get a totally free trial and then 10% off your first purchase. Baltic out there. I've set the GoPro on, doing a time lapse. I don't know what I'll be like. I have not used the GoPro for a couple of months now, so we'll see how it goes. So, my blood pressure monitor. So we've been out for the day, and I'd ordered it from Amazon, and I'd seen that it arrived. So we rushed, we rushed back in the evening, um, Unboxed it immediately, strapped it to my arm and set it away. So the thing on my arm pumps up, just about crushes it. But after a minute, it pops a few numbers out, which obviously I've got no idea what they mean. So as usual, I head over to Google to find out what my blood pressure readings mean. And at that moment, the bottom of my heart fell out, the bottom of my arsehole fell out as well. I absolutely shit myself. So... It said for the reading, it was 193 over 120 or something like that, which according to Google, I was dead. Um, I had to seek immediate um, medical assistance. And obviously I was panicking at this stage. Joe quickly calmed me down and says, you were at the doctors two days ago and they, they wouldn't have let you go if your blood pressure was critical. Um, have another double check and see what the crack is. So I hadn't read the instructions properly. Uh, it said not to have any coffee or anything like that before, um, not to have any exercise just before you take your reading. I'd supped about six cans of Pepsi Max that day um, and I'd had a cappuccino literally half an hour before I took the blood pressure reading. So I had to get a grip and calm myself down a little bit. 
and then properly read the instructions on when and how to take my blood pressure. So after that, I didn't have any more Pepsi Max or coffee. Uh, following morning, I took my blood pressure again, and it was 153 over 105 or something like that, which it dropped nearly 40 points on the, the top number. I was still in the high range, but not needing <laughs> immediate medical attention, according to Google anyway. So since then, I've got some decaf tea, decaf coffee. I bought some of the decaf Pepsi Max as well, although I'm not drinking it anywhere near as much as I was. I've got a bit of a problem when it comes to the Pepsi Max, I think. And then on Monday, I got a text to say that my blood results were in. So that was for the cholesterol and the blood sugar readings. Um, and to my surprise, uh, my cholesterol is borderline, apparently, with no further action required. And my blood sugars are satisfactory with no further action required. But the whole thing has been a massive kick up the arse and wake up call for me. I'm no good to anybody if I'm dead. Although the mortgage will be paid. <laughs> but I want to be able to get out and enjoy myself. And I've still hopefully got many years left in me. You, you take your health for granted. And... You know, all of this stuff. It's no having nice gear and getting to nice places is no good if you if you haven't got the health to, to enjoy it. So I've made one or two changes already. I'm not doing everything at once and you've still got to have some sort of life. And I can't live off celery for the rest of my life. That is a fact. And I brought a couple of beers with me still. In fact, these are the first beers that I've had since my last camp. So the doctor says to restrict that to one or two a day which I'm not going to have a drink every day, but you know, if there's an occasion, then I'm still going to have a beer or two or three or four, but in moderation. All right, time for a bit of dinner. We've got a yellow sticker, Mexican chicken fillets, and we've got some mushrooms and some asparagus. Get the pan warmed up. I even swapped out my oil for olive oil. Chicken instead of my steak. Although, I'm not giving up steak. Need a bigger pan. Healthy fats. That's starting to look the part now, isn't it? Obviously, I'm not going to be having my chicken medium rare. Another minute or two and then I'm diving in. Oh, time to perfection. That's just about to run out of fuel. There we go. That 
looks a feast. Fit for a king, that. That looks awesome. See what it's like, shall we? A mushroom first, I think. Oh yeah. This is just what I need. Cold night. Nice hot meal. A little bit of crunch still on the asparagus. See if that chicken's done. Oh. That is sublime. Told you I wasn't doing any more of the dehydrated meals. Can see why. Really easy to do. One pan. I prepped the veg at home today though. Normally I do it all when I'm here, but it's much easier to do at home. That hit the spot. And a much healthier option. I'm hoping that I can control the blood pressure through lifestyle changes as opposed to medication. We'll have to wait and see how that goes though. I will keep you posted. Time to put fire on. Oh no! I can't, oh, we got there in the end, look. Get the hands warmed up. <laughs> Had to jump in the bag. Really cold. I haven't brought my castor with me, so I've got no idea what the temperature is. Could Google it, but we already know. <laughs> you can't just Google. I haven't brought as much gear with me today, so there's no little table. There's no chair. So tonight's little chit chat. I'm going to do from in the comfort of my bag, I think. I have brought a little beer with me though. Well, two of them. Got to cut down on these as well. I've not had one since I last went camping, so... Cheers everyone. What are you drinking tonight? Well, that one's alright, that. I've had it before. It's not a strong one, like the Punk IPA. Right, let's crack on with tonight's bit of chit chat. Obviously I've spoken quite a bit already about my health check. Um, I just wanted to mention someone that put a comment on the last video. So it's Diesel Bushcraft. So thank you for your great comment, mate. And in his comment, he said, thankfully, due to a good friend sharing his journey, alarm bells started ringing for me. And you could say that he saved his life. So, unfortunately, that friend's no longer with him. But there's a quote. It's not his, and he has written it down. It says, we have two lives. The second one begins when we realise that we only have one. Which is a really great point. You think that, yeah... You're indestructible. You just keep plodding along. Chucking loads of beer down you, crap food. Um, living life to the extreme sometimes. Eventually, it will catch up with you. So all I'm gonna say is, if anyone else is putting off their health check or they're a little bit concerned about something, go and see your doctor. Um, they are there to help. Um, and you know it's it's been a wake up call for me anyway. Hopefully I can improve my health a little bit. Right, I'm gonna start off with talking about camping gear, more specifically the gear that that you should use um, or what people say you should use. So one of my mates shared a video with me by Fellman Dave. Um, I have seen some of his stuff before, but the video title is 
Was Paul Messner wrong about this stove? And he's on about the petrol stove that I used a couple of three camps ago and I didn't get on with it and I didn't like it. And I stated in the video why I didn't really like the stove. So I watched Dave's video where he's trying to prove me wrong about why I was wrong about the stove. First of all, I want to say that there's only me can decide whether I was wrong about a bit of gear. Same for you. I can't tell you that you're using the wrong kit. If it works for you, then fine. If it doesn't, then it's you that's decided that it doesn't work for you. Um, we've all got different opinions on stuff. We all got different needs and wants from a bit of equipment. So for anybody else to say that you're wrong about it, is wrong. <laughs> uh, so in the video, he's saying that it's a great bit of kit for cooking for multiple people and for use in extreme cold weather, which I actually say in the video that it is good for use in really cold weather. If you need to melt a lot of snow or you need to boil something really fast. I didn't mention cooking for multiple people, but I don't tend to cook for lots of people. I come solo camping most of the time. So I don't need something that's going to cook for a family of five or something. I'll be using something completely different to that anyway. Also in my video, I say that it's quite a bit of hassle to use the stove. And Dave says that he's going to show you how you can use that stove, no hassle at all. Which he does by picking up his lighter, going like that and lighting it. He doesn't show you the bit where you've got to connect everything up or you've got to do maybe 30 or 40 pumps to get the pressure up on the stove. So there's a bit of hassle there that he's neglected to, to really show in his video. Also, I state that the stove is really no good for, for using inside your tent. So I've cooked tonight inside my vestibule. Dave doesn't cook in his vestibule. He goes away from his tent. And when he lights the stove, the flame literally flares up to here. And you know, it just, it proves my point that I didn't think that the stove was right for me. If it works for him, that's great. I'm not gonna tell him not to use it. I'm not gonna tell him that, it's, that he's wrong about it. Um, it's what works for you as an individual. But the icing on the cake for me is when he says in his video that when he goes camping on his own, he's just gonna take his little gas stove because it's more suitable for his needs. And that's my point exactly. So yeah. I'm a solo camper the majority of the time. And if I go camping with someone else, we tend to cook our own stuff for ourselves. Um, it's not very sociable, I know. Um, I get a lot of comments about that, actually, why we don't cook more as a communal thing. So I do that in my bushcraft things. If I'm around the campfire, we do communal cooking. But while camping, you tend to be locked away in your tent or in your shelter doing your cooking yourself. Most of the time it's dehydrated meals, but you know, I'm trying to get away from those now. So yeah, it'd be nice to see a few more communal cooking things. Well, we'll see what we can do in the future. But back to Dave's video, he goes into some great detail in his, in his videos about the kit. So if you want to know all about the specs and history of stuff, so he does a great bit of the history of um, petrol kind of stoves, white gas stoves. So yeah, it's, it's well worth a watch. But to have your title, Was Paul Messner Wrong? I suppose I should be flattered a little bit. Um, there's a few people who use my name in the titles. I don't know why, it's not like I'm some kind of expert or anything. I'm just a bloke that comes camping, gets a bit geeky about some of the information and stuff like that, and then shares it with, with you lot. So um, <laughs> anyway, go check out Fellman Dave's video. What about a little bit of sport? mixed bag really when it comes to internationals anyway so so England are playing Italy as we speak it's currently one all at half time Harry Kane again I don't know what we do without him I did watch some of England Australia last week oh that was like pulling teeth <laughs> so I've not bothered watching the match tonight although this one is a Euro qualifier I think whereas the last one just a friendly. And the cricket isn't much better. 
Um, England got beat in the World Cup by Afghanistan. Didn't even know Afghanistan had a cricket team. But the rugby's all right. It's a shame I don't like rugby. It's one of them games where I used to get battered as a kid at school. I was only about four foot nothing. And the old big lads used to flatten me. So I've never got into it. But they're in the semi-finals of the World Cup. So wish them luck. Just had to pop out. Forgot to bring my little special bottle. So great idea for a tent, by the way. Have a dedicated bottle that you can just pee in. So you, if it's chucking it down with rain or it's Baltic out there, you haven't got to get out of your tent. Um, unless you've got to go digging holes anyway. <laughs> Going down a bit quicker this time. I've not talked cars before, I don't think. So the Land Rover, a little bit poorly. So it's making a bit of a, a grumble, a low, a low rumbling noise, about 30 mile an hour, usually when I'm turning right so I've got to get that booked in um, petrified of what it's going to cost like I was warned when I bought a Land Rover that at some point it would cost me money <laughs> but I've had it two years now that one Freelander 2 and other than tyres I don't think it's cost me out so yeah, I've been I've been happy with it. I chose that one because it's a bit more more like a normal car than say a Discovery or a Range Rover. But everything's electronic now as well. Do you remember the good old days when you used to be able to like have a go at fixing your car yourself? <laughs> um, you know, like my van recently went to the to the scrappy because the windscreen wiper motor died so I went and bought a used one for the van fitted it myself no bother at all but scrappies aren't like they used to be you used to go with a spanner yourself and <laughs> take bits off you used to say you want an indicator light and then come away with like a carburetor or something like that it was that was in your pocket you used to get more than you wanted but you used to have to strip it yourself it's not like that anymore everything's on the shelf, ready to go, and it's more like a, a normal shop, just with mucky bits. Yeah, I remember some of my older cars. Yeah, you know, like like my Mini. I used to have a, an old school Mini. Uh, and it was it was a, ro a rotten rust bucket. In fact, I had to get in through the passenger side door for a long period of time because if I opened the driver's side it would fall off <laughs> that's how bad it was but back in the day you could buy a car for a couple hundred quid you know, run it till it died and then go and buy another car you know, things don't work like that anymore I don't think they do anyway or I've probably grown out of that but I didn't always have bangers um, my first car was a Austrian Austrian Austin Maestro, <laughs> 1.3 City, registration plate C90JWA in red. I'm reciting that like I really loved it and it's not what I wanted. I wanted an XR2 and I borrowed the money to buy a car and my mum says, take your uncle with you, Uncle Brian. Um, he had a maestro <laughs> and he went with me to choose a car and come away with an Austrian maestro 1.3 zero grunt uh, but but I did up my game with next one so next car that I got after a maestro was an Escort RS Turbo um, which was oh, it, I think it's my favourite car that I've owned Although I do really love this Land Rover, um, but yeah, that was a Mercury Grey E100 XKW. I 
can remember those two number plates and I know my current number plate. Any other car in between, I've got no idea. <laughs> Strange that. Yeah, so my RS Turbo was rapid. 19 year old I was, and I think I paid £1,100 in insurance. This was back in 1993, something like that. Yeah, it's bad then. And yeah, I had a good job back then. So I, I worked for British Aerospace Company, well, Royal Ordnance, the Guns and Vehicles Division in Nottingham. So that's where I did my apprenticeship in mechanical engineering. And yeah, that was decent money back then. But yeah, I had this thing about hot hatches. I always wanted a hot hatchback, so I had quite a few. Um, let me know in the comments what hot hatch you had and which one you always wanted and never got. If you had, if you were into cars anyway. Um, yeah, so I've, I've had two XR2s. I've had one, they were both a bit beaten up to be fair. Both white, both the crappiest colour, but that's what I could afford at the time. And they popped up. Um, I've had an Astra GTE, that's the worst hot hatch I've ever had because it had like, it had a problem with the immobiliser so it just kept dying on me and I couldn't move anywhere and I have to get rescued. It had the like speedo that was digital and it like went up like a ramp <laughs> with numbers on it. thought I was like Michael Knight from Knight Rider or something. <laughs> what else did I have? Um, I never had a Golf GTI. I always wanted a Golf GTI. I never had a Peugeot uh, 109 GTI. I wanted the, sorry, not 109, 205 GTI, the 1.9 version. Um, they were, they were gorgeous. If you've got any of these kind of cars now, they're like silly money. If I had my RS Turbo now, it would be worth about thirty thousand pound or something like that. Which is crazy. It's the only car I think that I've ever made money on. Not a lot, but I made money on it when I sold it. Um, what else have I had? Uh, I think I've had a yeah, I've had a Cavalier SRI. Didn't have a Nova. I've had a Nova. Nova SR. <laughs> you had to have it lowered as well. And all of these things, did you get? Max Power magazine. So <laughs> this was like a, a magazine for lads really that wanted to soup up their cars. You know, they would buy a 1.3 Escort and then concrete a spoiler on the back of it or something like that. Uh, and then put stickers on it and drill holes in the exhaust so they make a horrible noise. I know you still get that kind of thing, but yeah. Happy days. But now, I wouldn't thank you for it like that. You know, they would make me fillings fall out if I was driving around in them. I like my Land Rover, and I think I would get another, you know, four before if, if I ever get rid of that. I'm sure I will at some point. But I want comfort now. I don't want speed or anything like that. I just want to be able to get about, get. Not off-road as such, but you know, if a going gets tough, there's a bit of snow or something like that, I want to be able to get to where I want to get. But they're so expensive. Cost a fortune to run. Rubbish on petrol. Although, you know, we're going to end up in electric cars at some point. Can you get electric 4 before's? Uh, I've not really looked into it, to be honest. Yeah, so I'll let you know what happens with the Land Rover might have to be driving the van for a little bit. So what do you reckon to the tent? It's definitely smaller than some of the other tents I've been using lately. But it is cosier, it's warmer. And because you're in a smaller volume, I think, you can heat up the internals a bit more. Uh, I don't know if that candle's making any difference, but I do like that little bit of ambiance that a candle light delivers. Big thanks to everyone that's entered the raffle so far to win one of these and the uh, the rest of the gear for wool 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 for a full wild camping setup anyway cracking bit of kit 
I think it ends on the 31st, so if you want to enter, that link will be in the description below as well. All right, YouTube. Who have you been watching? Let me know if there's anyone that I need to check out. It doesn't have to be wild camping. So I've been watching a lot of the bald foodie guy. I think his name's Gaz, Gareth. He's from up north. I think it's, he's in Cumbria way. I'm not sure exactly where it is now. It's um, Lancaster maybe. Kendall, somewhere around there anyway. And he basically, he goes to Aldi and he'll buy a steak and kidney pie and he'll review it. <laughs> and, but he is the most down to earth, genuine bloke that you could meet. Yeah, I just can't get enough of it. There's, there's videos every other day, I think. And yeah, I've been and actually bought food based on, on his reviews from Aldi. Um, but he just, just, doesn't just do Aldi, he does like Marks and Spencers, Iceland, all of that kind of stuff. And if it's crap, he'll tell you. If it's nice, he'll tell you. He'll also maybe pop to KFC every now and again. He did the KFC Summit Zinger Tower burger thing the other day. Um, 10 quid for KFC now. Uh, but yeah, it's it's really good. He he does live streams as well, so I've tuned into a few of those. Um, so you can sit and have a beer with him and a natter. Um, he's a really nice bloke. Um, I'll have to get him camping one day. Ask him if he wants to come camping. Get in his comments, and he can cook me a <laughs> an Aldi pie or something like that. So who else have I been watching? Scotty's gone walkabout. He's an um, Australian guy, does lots of like bivvy camping and tarp camping and things like that. I've learnt a few tarp setups from watching his videos. Does like a bit of a campfire. Uh, I'm not sure how he, he does some of the stuff he does in Australia. There's some real nasty critters over there. Some of the deadliest animals in the world, but he's happy to lay under a tarp around him, so... <laughs> That's why I watch him on YouTube rather than doing it myself. Yeah, that's what I've been watching just lately. I don't watch loads of wild camping stuff, to be honest with you. Um, I think we are two alike. So whatever somebody else makes, yeah, I've got something similar or Andy Wardle's got something similar or... Grizzly Gaz has got something similar, you name it, we've all done it. And it just seems to be overcrowded a little bit. I think that's part of the reason why I'm trying these kind of things, where it's a bit more chatty, a bit more, maybe like a podcast, something that you could listen to rather than just watch all of the time. Because there's only so many times that you can see walk-bys, <laughs> tents being pitched, and you know water being poured into an orange mug, so... At least this is more conversational. So let me know what you think of it, these kind of videos, whether you like the, the chatty bit. Um, you know, if it gets a good response, I'll do more of this kind of stuff. If there's bits of the video that you skip by, tell me what bits you skip by. And I'll try not to put as much of that in the videos. Uh, yeah, it's, it's all good feedback. I, I don't mind feedback. <laughs> it's not trolling. Feedback's good, feedback's good. So did you know that we are also on Facebook and Instagram? Nearly at 5,000 followers now on Facebook. So it's not the same as on YouTube. I think Instagram's about 20,000, something like that. Um, I'll put links either on the screen or in the description. If you're on any of those platforms, um, bob on, have a look, see what we've got to, got to show you. There's also a Facebook group, um, Paul Messner YouTube Community. Shit name, I know. Um, but the community in there is brilliant. It's not the biggest wild camping group, but it is, I think it's one of the most helpful and friendliest. Um, people there, they're, they're not there to, to judge you or to you know, slam you for, answer, for asking genuine questions. Some of the bigger groups, 
you know, you don't ask a question because they shoot you down and say, you know, that's what the search is for. You know, what is wrong with asking a question and starting a conversation? Uh, I think some people are a little bit, a bit over the top when it comes to shooting people down, just because they know the answer doesn't mean that everybody else does. So what else do I know? Um, so my, my lovely wife, Jo, she has got her first ever little stall for selling her paintings. So she's, she's braving it. So she's, she's really creative. I don't know if you've seen any of her, her Instagram stuff. So she's got an Instagram page, Happy Creative Mind. Um, she'll have a website up pretty soon as well. And she started painting a while back and she doesn't, she doesn't realize how good she is at it. And she used to just do them for gifts for people and things like that. But she's now, she's gonna try and sell a few as well and see how she gets on with it. But I'm really, really proud of her. And I really love her paintings. I don't know where she gets some of the ideas from. So if you're in the Sheffield area next weekend and you wanna come and say hello to us both, <laughs> ask me in the comments and I'll, I'll tell you where it's at. I don't know off the top of my head um, the address, but, but it'd be nice to see you there anyway. Right, I'm gonna finish off with thank yous again. So big thank you to everybody that watches the videos. Thank you for hitting the like button on this particular video and all of the other videos. See what I did there. Um, thank you to everybody that sends super chats, super thanks, memberships, Patreons. Oh, I'm sure I forgot everybody as well. Anyone that comments on the videos, Instagram, Facebook, all of those things, really do appreciate it. And hopefully, I get to see you out and about on the hill sometime. That's that sunrise I was talking about yesterday. Get back in and put the kettle on, I think. So it was actually really warm in here last night, considering how cold it was outside. Big bag. Normally a quilt man, but because I've been feeling the chill. Not bothering with the milk this morning. <laughs> Think it a bit ropey. Need to buy some fresh stuff. You would think it'd keep for ages though, wouldn't you? That dehydrated stuff. It might have just been the outside, but it did smell definitely sour. Need to get some decaf cappuccinos. So we didn't get any of that wind that we forecast. A few little breezy bits, but basically what it is now. Tent. It's got a fine thing of condensation on it, but it's not wet through or anything, which is surprising. I don't know if the new little vent makes a difference. Anyone want a bacon sarni? Apparently a bit of extra potassium is good for me. Not sure how much potassium is in bacon and brown sauce though. Although banana skins are biodegradable, it does take a long, long time for these to break down. Take that rubbish home with you as well. Apparently they have a lot of problems in places like Ben Nevis and stuff like that, where people just think you can chuck your banana skin on the floor and it'll rot away in a couple of weeks. 
places riddled with decomposing banana skins. I suppose I better summarize this little camp before I move on to all of the gear. It was nice to get out. Um, I can't imagine if I wasn't able to get out camping. And if I don't look after myself a little bit more and put my health first, one day I might not be able to do this anymore. There will come a time anyway, and I just physically can't do it. But there are things that I can do, such as eat better, exercise more, that can hopefully <laughs> prolong the inevitable. Right, the tent. This is a great little four season shelter for the UK. Inside there it was toasty warm last night. It is a little bit snug in the internal bit, but that does help retain the heat. The vestibule mule is huge. Loads of room for you, rubbish. And although I didn't need to test it last night, these tents are really robust as well, so they'll take a hammer in from wind and rain. Cook system and the food, food was brilliant. It just goes to show that you can eat healthily when it comes to camping. Although black tea, which is probably better for you, is rubbish. I need to up my game in the hot drink department. The UCO candle, really nice bit of kit that. I think the, the pouch is like an optional extra for it, but keeps it protected. It's surprising how comforting having this in your tent is. Obviously you've got to be careful with the flame. I wouldn't leave it on all night while you're asleep, but yeah, definitely recommend that. New Rab, I think it's Neutrino 600. Can't remember, have a look. The Trino 600 in wide. This did a brilliant job last night. I did open it up in the middle of the night, so it was more like a quilt. Oh, it was toasty warm though. Me personally, when I'm feeling the chill, I like to go overboard. So the sleeping pad worked a treat as well. It's almost the same spot as when I camped here last time. It's really comfy this. If I've got one criticism, it's a little bit small. Um, and your feet can fall off the end a little bit if you move around a lot like I do. But these higher bits on the baffles, they hold you on the pad. So I was toasty warm all night. I didn't fall off it, but my feet dropped off a couple of times. So this is the best pillow that I've used yet. It's Thermarest um, pillow sack. I don't know what it's called, to be honest with you. Inside here, I've got <laughs> my outdoor research jacket, synthetic. And then I could get the perfect height by just pumping, you see it's some inflatable pillow up just the right amount. Work to treat anyway. Although if you add up all the prices to each of those, the most expensive pillow ever. For camping anyway. Have you seen the price of some of those like temper mattress pillows and stuff like that? Ridiculous. Over hundred pounds for a pillow. Little down boots did a job. Although I think they're a bit bulky for what they are. I'd rather just have some down socks, I think, for next time. Can you believe something I haven't got?
Right, that's another one done. Right, steady walk back to the car. Make sure that you look after yourselves as well. You know, we're only here once, aren't we? So make the most of it, but try and prolong it as long as possible. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll hopefully see you next time.